So where does artistic inspiration come from and how do we access it or recognize it when it hits? from Cario Viz Art Studio and today I'm going to talk about what I learned by copying a painting by the 19th century German painter Heinrich Hoffmann. Heinrich Hoffmann was deeply spiritual and he devoted the majority of his work to depicting the life of Jesus Christ. And one of the really interesting things about Hoffmann is that he never used a model when depicting the face of Christ. He felt that there really wasn't anybody that could accurately portray Christ. So he worked from an image that just simply, it came to his mind. Now when you see how consistently and how exquisitely that he portrays the face of Christ, I remember reading about this and thinking like, wow, this man must have been truly divinely inspired. So my own journey with Hoffman started out of a desire with my own work to try and portray uh, the inner experience or the light of the soul of the person that I was trying to paint. And I had been looking at a number of different artists who had successfully managed to do that and Hoffman was one of them and he was the one that I really felt compelled to copy at that particular time. So I set out to find out exactly how you do that and it was through a process of trial and error like I had to paint the face of Christ over like five times, paint it out, put it back in and keep trying and, and experimenting to actually eventually come up with a technique of glazing that actually got me the, the feeling and the, 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 the expression that I was looking for. And I've actually used it successfully in a number of my paintings ever since. Like it was really a breakthrough moment for me. But for me, the highlight of that experience was actually just how much I loved doing that painting. Not only do I simply resonate with Hoffman's work and appreciate the quality of his work, but when I was doing this piece, I really honestly and truly felt divinely inspired and guided. And this is one of the beautiful things about art. There is that mystical element to it, that intangible, you know, th beautiful thing that compels us or draws us to something or to express something. So what touch of the divine whispers to you over and over again? What are the ideas that keep coming up? What are the things that you feel compelled to look at or pursue? Or what ideas do you feel very, very strongly about and really feel like these are the things that you want to express with your work? So in my experience of doing this copy, as much as I learned to do a particular painting technique, it was the first time that I did a copy and I began to realize that there was something else was going on. It was almost as if I had an awakening and I began to realize that there was a, a much broader and deeper value in doing these masterworks. And by the time I finished this copy, I realized I'd learned three main things. And the first thing I learned was the difference between having external influences on my work as opposed to a compelling need to really follow my own inner voice. What is it that's really important for me to say? What do I love to paint? What do you love to paint? And the need to follow through on that. The second thing I learned is that these ideas, even though they come to us, they're like children or like a little seedling or something. You need to nurture them. You need to get in there and pay attention to them and work to bring them out and to life. It takes work. And the third thing I learned is that by looking to the masters, chances are that somebody out there has been, you know, struggling with the same concept and idea and has successfully worked it through. And by looking at them, studying them, and deconstructing their work, there's a very good chance that there's something in there that you can walk away with or glean from their experience that will help you with your own work. I've had lots of people say, you know, I love art. I'd love to be able to do it. But, you know, honestly, I, I don't know what I would paint or draw. But the truth of the matter is, is that if you have thoughts and feelings, and everybody does, and if you feel strongly about something, and everybody does, then you actually have a place to start. Paint what you love and then take those ideas and those feelings and nurture them. 
run with it, work with those ideas, and then go out and look to the masters and see what you can learn from their process and experience. And to me, this is the place to start. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Be sure to visit my website from the link below where you can download my free studio setup guide. You can also take my free introductory course called Getting You Started with Realistic Drawing.